Well, good evening from London. Welcome to Piers Morgan Uncensored. Harry and Meghan's claims about supposed racists in the royal family have left a predictable and poisonous legacy for the last few years. We live in an age where grievances are given the benefit of the doubt, where the establishment is toxic by default, where my truth apparently means more than the truth. They knew the power their words would hold, and many people across the world took their words at face value. Now, almost three years on, Britain is still dealing with the fallout from this. And also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? About how dark your baby is going to be? Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Hold up, hold up. There's Stop several right now. There are several conversations. There's a about conversation it. with you, with Harry, about how dark your baby is going to be. Potentially, and what that would mean or look like. Ooh. And you're not going to tell me who had the conversation. I think that would be very damaging to them. Okay. Compartmentalized they were conversations. They concerned that if he were too brown, that that would be a problem. Are you saying that? I wasn't able to follow up with why, but that if that's the assumption you're making, I think that feels like a pretty safe one. You may recall that I lost my previous job for responding to these claims by saying I didn't believe a word of it. Well, Harry and Meghan have never provided any evidence for that highly incendiary claim. It's not like they haven't had the chance to. After all, they pumped out six hours of self-indulgent bilge on Netflix, trashing Britain and the press for its racism. They didn't mention what they said on Oprah. Harry wrote 150,000 words of family bashing poison in his memoir, Spare, and told the TV studios to promote it, but didn't mention what they'd said to Oprah Winfrey. Meghan had a 12-part podcast on Spotify. Didn't mention it either. It was like it never happened, like it disappeared. Clearly, neither of them gave a damn about raw protocol or family privacy. In fact, they built a whole industry around violating their own privacy and that of their relatives. But instead of backing up those claims, about racism on their relentless publicity tour. Harry did a sort of strange U-turn, didn't he, a few months ago? Tried to pretend they'd never said them. It was, it was us. It was the media. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even... You really well, don't. of the British press said that. Right. I... Did, did Meghan ever mention that they were racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, Archie's skin colour. There was concern color. about his skin colour. Right. Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. It took him two years to do that, you two. Two years of the royal family are a bunch of racists flying around the world. I was in America through a lot of that period, and they all believed it because it had appeared on Oprah. Then he says, I never, never meant to say anything about racism. What are you all talking about? It's the beastly media. Well, now Harry and Meghan's lickspittle client journalist Omid Scobie, the man who lied about his age, Said he was 33 when, in fact, he was 38, a bit older now. Said he never used private jets and then got reminded of an Instagram picture of him the week before he denied that this week, showing him on a private jet. The man who said that I have regular phone calls with Queen Camilla. Regular phone calls. Never had one phone call with Queen Camilla in my entire life. I'd like to, but she doesn't call. Well, Scobie is back with a spiteful, lie-filled new book that's poured fuel on the flames. He says that Meghan wrote private letters to King Charles, naming two royals who she accuses of taking part in those supposedly troubling conversations about Archie's skin colour. Scobie initially said he knew the names but couldn't legally report them. But, of course, he could have done outside of the UK. He could have done it in America if he wanted to, where the book is published. He could have done it anywhere. But he said he never names names which is another of his lies. And yet overnight, they were sensationally revealed, suddenly, out of nowhere, in the Dutch version of Scobie's book. Journalists had been sent copies, and the book was briefly on sale in bookstores before being suddenly withdrawn in a dash by the publishers. Scobie initially said it was a translation error, which didn't really make any sense, because how do you mistranslate names? They're either there or they're not. The publisher now says it wasn't translation, it was simply an error. But how did that error happen? How is there an entire different version 
appearing in a Dutch edition of this book. The consequence of that error is that millions of people online around the world now know the royals are again being implicated in what I think is a completely baseless claim of inferred racism. There is, again, massive speculation about who the people are who were supposedly making comments about Archie's skin colour, which is incredibly unfair to all the royal family. They've all been tarred with this brush now for years. Well, I'm going to end all this nonsense because, frankly, if a book is on the streets in Holland available to Dutch people containing names that Omid Scobie, the Lickspittle scribe for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, the man who you may remember denied they had any, any involvement in the last book, and so did Meghan. Do you remember? Oh, nothing to do with it. But then in court, many months after the book was published, under oath, she had to admit she had emailed her aides briefing notes for when they met Scobie. So she was one of his primary sources on that first book. Now again, we're being told she had nothing to do with this. And maybe she didn't. And maybe we should be believing Omi Scobie when he says he did not ever write these names down in any draft of his book. It just somehow popped up in the Dutch version of the book. How? I've written 10 books, I think it is now. I've never had a version of my book pop up in a foreign edition that contained unbelievably damning allegations about two of the most famous people in the world, and I had nothing to do with it and didn't know how it got there, and nor did anybody else. How does it get there, Omid? Surely you as the author, I mean, you, you must be furious, right? You, you must be demanding. Heads roll. And you want names, don't you, ironically, Omid, about who did this to you? who besmirched your reputation as an author? I would, Omid. I'd want to know right now, especially if I was trying to convince the world that I had nothing to do with it myself and I'd never, ever put these names in writing and maybe some lawyer had come along and told me not to. I mean, that couldn't possibly have happened because you've given us your word and as I've established so far in this monologue, your word is your bond and should be taken as sacrosanct. Well, I'm going to cut through all this crap I'm going to tell you the names of the two senior royals who are named in that Dutch version of the book. Because, frankly, if Dutch people wandering into a bookshop can pick it up and see these names, then you, British people here, who actually pay for the British royal family, you're entitled to know too. And then we can have a more open debate about this whole Farago, because I don't believe any racist comments were ever made by any of the royal family. And until there is actual evidence of those comments being made, I will never believe it. But now we can start the process of finding out if they ever got uttered, what the context was, and whether there was any racial intent at all. Like I say, I don't believe there was. The royals who are named in this book are King Charles and Catherine, Princess of Wales. Well, joining me now is the royal editor of the Sunday Times, Roy Nicker, who just discovered I was going to do that. Royal biographer Tom Bauer, who also just discovered I was going to do that, and the professor of black studies at Birmingham University, Kehinde Andrews. But first, the Dutch royal journalist, Rick Evers, who has read the damning excerpt because he's seen it in the Dutch version. Um, let me talk to you, Rick, first of all. Uh, when you first saw what appeared in the Dutch version, what did you think? Well... I wouldn't think I would have some uh, big scoop because I, I was thinking that everyone in the whole world would have the same copy except it would be in English. So I didn't, I, I wasn't aware that it was such a big thing. How do you Of think... course it is a big thing that their names are in it, but right. um, everyone would, would have the same, the same copy, isn't it? Usually. Right. Well, I didn't under, I, I couldn't work out in my rational head why you should know what those names were, but <laughs> British people shouldn't. So that's why I've said them. Um, and to repeat, I don't believe a word of these uh, racism claims, never have done. Yeah. I've seen no evidence to suggest they're true. I think it was an ugly smear. And now at least we can have a public debate about it and people can say what they really want to say about it. But yeah. from your perspective, how do you think these paragraphs appeared in the Dutch version if Omid Scobie, the author, insists, as he has done, that he had nothing to do with it, 
never put these names in writing, never supplied a draft with those names. First of all, I want to say, um, after your track record, uh, Beers, um, it would be, uh, would be very uh, unimpressed if you didn't mention these names. So, uh, well done, uh, because you're the first one, I think, on TV that you're, that's doing that. Um, well, I don't, well, to be honest with you, I, I don't, under, do I don't understand the... why, why journalists wouldn't. I haven't understood why we haven't so far, because the moment a book is published exactly. and available to people on the streets of another country, containing these names, um, you know, I don't, I don't even know if these are the two names of the two people that Meghan Markle originally with Harry claimed made these comments. We don't know. Um, but we do know they've appeared mm. in the book, a version of the book, and it's Omi Scobie's book, and we do know that under oath, Meghan Markle admitted that she, she conspired in his last book as one of his sources. So yeah. let's, wait, let's wait and see how this plays out. But again, just to come back, what do Dutch mm -hmm. people in the media think has happened here? Well, I don't think Dutch people really care about it but because it's, it's, it's the, the US royal family in this case that is, uh, is involved. Not even the British royal family, actually, because people don't believe it, I think. Um, but on the other hand, how did it end up in the book? I think it's, it is in the way uh, Omid is describing it. Um, it was not in the manuscript. What is the manuscript? Is it the final version that you hand in, in your, at your publisher? In that case, it was in an earlier version and it got erased in all the other versions all over the world, except for that tiny little country, the Netherlands, that has been overlooked. Uh, maybe someone overlooked uh, the Netherlands to send us a memo, uh, the publisher, or maybe the publisher forgot to do it. I don't know. Well, it's very mysterious. Let me go to another seasoned author, Tom Bauer. You've written many books. Have you ever known a situation, Tom, where a version of your book has appeared in a foreign version containing paragraphs you knew nothing about that contained bombshell revelations? It's impossible. And also, more to the point, you also complained that the French translations were wrong too. Mm. I mean, the problem with Scooby is everyone is getting it wrong what he wrote. But, of course, he can't probably remember what he wrote himself because it's so full of fabrication. Well, I'm not saying he's lying about having no involvement in this. I I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, generally, he's a terrible liar. He's a terrible liar. Uh, we know that from his own statement about mm. the briefing from Jason Knauf, on the, which Megan mm. gave him. We know he's a liar. And I think he's fabricated a lot in his book. And he lied when he said he didn't have Megan's help in this book. Mm. Clearly, he was briefed by Megan's people from uh, California. And he says they share mutual friends, well, right? Possibly. But those they friends should. would not be allowed to <laughs> cooperate no, no. with him without permission. Exactly. It's, it's exactly fanciful. before. This is all. This, his book, again, is Megan's voice. Why has she decided to launch another war? a battle against the royal family, that's for her to explain. But she hasn't dissociated herself from... Um, Ob have, have you ever thought that there was any racial intent no, from no, any I mean, comments I, made? No, no, I mean, the whole... St this is actually, I explained it in my Meghan book very clearly. It was a very, very early on in Harry's relationship with Meghan. He goes for tea to Clarence House. He's sitting there with King Charles, Prince Charles then and, and Camilla, and they eventually discover who he's dating and all the rest of it. And Camilla, very, as a joke, just says, I wonder what your baby will look like. Well, he, he or she have ginger hair. It's just the normal... And when that, that originally came out, it had nothing to do with racism, as Harry himself admits. It was all to do with a perennial problem, what will your baby look like if it comes from different parents? I just thought it was incredibly disingenuous of Harry. After two years yes. of feverish racism yes. slurs... He, was, the thing about Harry he then is, said... He then said well, oh, we never but, meant to infer racism. No, no, but the whole point is in the opera interview that he comes on to the programme after uh, uh, Megan has spoken and says, no, she's wrong. It all happened long before she right. was pregnant. It happened right at the beginning of our relationship. Mm. It was just a normal tea conversation. Nearly two years before. Exactly. And so Megan had lied. I mean, there were 17 lies she uttered right. in the opera interview. That was one of her lies. Yeah. And that is the problem. He's now hoist by it. But the real problem is he's caused enormous damage. And Scobie... Huge damage. And Scobie to get some money and all the rest, stirs it again and again and again. But this time, yet again, is definitely with Meghan's approval. OK, Roy, look, you didn't know I was going to do the naming of these two people. I don't want to uh, get you involved in that directly. You're a royal correspondent. But on the wider picture, this book is getting more and more attention. It's now front-page news of many papers. It clearly has a lot of damaging revelations. It follows a familiar pattern from his first book. All the main royals are awful. Duke and Duchess of Sussex are angelic and weren't they treated so badly? Um, 
How, how significant is this book? Is it going to actually have any real effect, do you think? Well, it's interesting you say it's full of damaging revelations and bombshells, because actually from what I have read so far, it's just full of Omid's own highly partisan views and mm. opinions, rather than fact-based damaging bombshell allegations that I think uh, a lot of people thought were going to be unveiled with real proper evidence behind them. And I have to say, I've been asked about the book a lot this week, and it's just felt quite predictable. And of course, it was always going to get lots of traction mm. because it's Omid, it's the royals. But it just feels, once again, like Finding Freedom, a very one-sided partisan. The rest of the royal family are awful, Harry and Meghan's Men of Roses. And I think actually the British public and a lot of the wider public are able to sort of decide for themselves which camp they're in, how much they believe, how much they don't. I mean, you've talked about already mm. this week the things that Omen has said about you that aren't true. Yeah. He's, he's, he's really not a fan of the Sunday Times coverage I've read, I and mean, he had a whinge and a moan about my William interview knocking off Trooping the Colour from the front page. Mm. We never put Trooping the Colour on the front page, and so on and so forth. So I think, is it going to be hugely damaging? I think it'll whip up a storm, predictably, you know, to get publicity, and I feel that possibly something around these names could be to do with publicity. But I don't think it's going to have real lasting damage because I don't think people are going to believe every, all his opinions. Right, and, that, and, I'm, and they shouldn't, by the way, from my experience. But the, the, in terms of, I guess, the, the, the family relationships here, particularly Harry and his father, mm. we were reading signs of potential rapprochement. Would they come to Sandringham? I've got to say, I think I've got more chance of being at Sandringham than Meghan Markle pulling... <laughs> no, that's my story. They'd like to. crackers. <laughs> They'd like to. Yeah. Um, it was your story, yeah. Mm. Um, but none of this is going to help because there is this belief, which may or may not be true in the case of this book. Mm. That's, I don't know, right? But we know in the first book, Meghan Markle said she had nothing to do with it and then under oath had to admit she did. If, if it turns out the same has happened here and she's authorised friends to help him and give him stuff, because let's face it, this exchange of letters between Charles and, and Meghan Markle... Only one of them can have told people about that. And mm. Charles is not the kind of guy that's going to be telling people about a letter like that, which makes me think it's her and her friends or somebody has gone to Scobie. We'll wait and see. Mm. But if that is the case, this is going to be very damaging to the ongoing trust issues between yeah. Charles and Harry. Well, trust is the key issue. And I think that was something I, I touched on in that piece about them saying we wouldn't decline an invitation to spend time with the family. The problem is, as, as you just right, rightly said, Imagine what a whole Christmas at Sandringham um, mm. would, would produce in terms of potential, you know, potential future content. And I think looking at, you know, the phone call between Charles and mm. Harry and Meghan um, around Charles' 70th birthday, it was briefed before it happened and it was briefed after. And I think if you can't even have a private phone conversation that isn't briefed before or after... I honestly wouldn't trust... If, I, if that was someone in my family, after what they've done? Yeah. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. I wouldn't trust, trust them as far as I can throw them. Trust is the issue, and that's not changing anytime soon. Let's go to Kahindi Andrews. Be waiting uh, patiently here. Uh, Kahindi, we've talked a lot about uh, race issues over the years, but specifically here, there is no doubt that when they went on Oprah Winfrey uh, two years ago, they made a series of allegations directly inferring racism by senior members of the royal family which they've never produced evidence for, and which two years later, Harry said, oh, we didn't mean racism, we meant unconscious bias and so on. Do you not feel that that is incredibly damaging to people like you who constantly fight battles for racial equality, racial justice, you know, try and, and fight proper battles about this? Is it not incredibly damaging for that when someone of their profile tries to pretend what they said to Oprah Winfrey was not what it was? Well, no, I mean, I think the allegations when they came out, we all kind of believed it. It wasn't something that seems completely outrageous. Also, I'm not sure what evidence you could have. And actually, if you listen to the clips, they're clearly trying not to say the names because they know the names are going to cause this massive storm. But I think a bigger problem with the whole way this has been, has been portrayed is Oprah is shocked, everybody's shocked. No, no black person I know was shocked that this came up in a conversation in the royal family. And the bigger problem here really is that actually it, it isn't about racist royals. It's about the, the royal family is racism. It is a symbol of white supremacy. That's the bigger problem. Well, because the way they're we white. talk about this now is completely Because ludicrous. they're white. No, not because they're white. But not what? because they're white, because they are Where almost is the exclusively Where white. Where is the evidence of them being white the supremacists? Link, the link back to the club. 
the link back to colonialism. Why do we even... The idea that a, a, a country like Britain, which is incredibly diverse, an empire which was more diverse, is led by this almost exclusively white family into the 21st century. I'm sorry, that is... So, you, so you're judging them by, the, by their skin colour? That's the colour, issue not, of racism. So you're, just to be clear, you're judging them by their skin no, colour, no, not no. the content of their characters? No. I'm, say, I'm saying their skin colour is not an accident. It is not an accident that Meghan Markle... No, they're the white. Black they can't the help family. being white. It is not an accident that she, she's run out of the family. Okay, Andy, they're no, white. The, no, you're they're black. white. The I'm white. We it's can't help our skin colour. It's, it's, it's not about their skin colour. It's about what it represents. The idea that the that King Charles is the king of... My family's from Jamaica, which is 90% black people, and the, king of, uh, the, the head of state of Jamaica is this is the king charles it's ludicrous that is a ludicrous thing in the 21st century but that is what i'm saying symbol of white supremacy what That's are you going to have a vote yeah, i couldn't I mean, care less can... if it was kate yeah, listen countries like jamaica will have it's, votes it's and not, they can it's decide not about having a vote it's about the no no but no, I mean, it's the about point the is history. you can about why there are that? countries choosing it? there are countries can... like jamaica choosing whether they want to go independent that's absolutely a democratic right you don't have to have uh, uh, our no, monarch as the head of state the fact that's a choice the fact that's a choice in the 21st century tells you there's a big problem. But do you, I'm just do, saying, do you, you think anyone then, so anyone in the royal family, the, not Henry, just to be clear, anyone in the royal family, as far as you're concerned, is a white supremacist simply because they're white and they're part no, of the royal family? This, what I'm saying is this, the, the royal family, like the police or like universities or I work, they are, they, are, they are institutions of white supremacy. It's not about the individuals. It's about what they do. It's about their role in the world. That's the real case. The royal family should be gone. It should be abolished. It shouldn't exist if we're talking about anti-racism. I really couldn't get this which, which royal said what, because that's not, that actually distracts What if they the didn't say it at all? Why on earth would we accept What this? if they didn't say it at all, but the whole world well, has been led for two, three years <laughs> to believe that they did? What about that scenario? Like I said, like I said, this doesn't like for me. It really doesn't matter whether they said it or not. It's not you think the, they're the all racist anyway, right? It's not about individual people. Say so it's not. They are all racist. They are as in, as in an institution which is racism, which is one of these primary symbols of racism. You know, sometimes Kate I think Hindi, it is a bit surprising that Kate. I think hmm? I'm going to say sometimes you know when when your default so, position, which it always is, by the way, is that. Everyone's a white supremacist if they've got white skin colour until they can prove otherwise. <laughs> uh, it so, is your default position. Yeah, you know what I said. And it, it is your default Shut, position. It, Piers, you know, it's not what I said. That's always been your default position. I said that the institution. Any no, white my, people in any position, position of authority, that, power, anything, no, they're all white supremacists. Default according position. To you. It does beg the question my why, default position why, is why do you want to live in a country like this if they're any all white supremacists? Like the. Ro the well, I should I, should, I could go home back to Jamaica. No, but unfortunately, I don't, I don't care. The head of state is the king. You can go. It's the same can, problem. I can't can even get away from it. You can go where the hell you like. I'm just saying, why, why, <laughs> honestly, why, why stay in a country you believe is led in every pillar of the establishment and society by white supremacists? Makes no sense to me. Because the reality is that that's the world. I, I didn't choose the world. That is the world that I inhabit. And I would stress, I am not saying that all white people are white supremacists. I actually think. When we think about racism as individual racist, it's the worst way to think about it. Think about the systems, think about the institutions. And the royal family is exclusively white for a reason. It is the head of the so-called Commonwealth British Empire for a reason. It is a direct connection to the colonial history that this country loves so much. Mm. It is the pre premier symbol of white supremacy. You know and what? It's actually, one of those it's actually not that exclusively this, white. These comments. It's not exclusively white because the Duchess almost of Sussex... Almost exclusively. I said the almost Duchess of Sussex is not white. I said almost exclusively. Uh, what she did do was yeah, she the, entered the, the royal family... The that proves the rule. She launched a, 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 a grenade of uh, racism allegations and has ever since stayed no, silent she, about she those. She barely did anything. And let, the, she and let, in, them, and let she them run riot the around family. the world. I mean, that to me... She came into that the royal family me, and her blackness was so, is, so much of an affront that way, everybody lost their minds. That, in a way, is a form of racism, actually, in my view, what she's done. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how this all plays out now because <laughs> I've, I've decided to Sorry, name Piers, the two people really named, named in the Holland version of this book. Let's, yeah. let's see how this plays out. Let's see whether Meghan Markle and Harry were involved with Scobie's book. Let's see what Scobie and his involvement in this offending paragraph and naming was. Let's just see how this all plays out. And let's give the members of the royal family that they besmirched collectively, let's give them the chance to properly respond because I don't believe a word of it. Anyway, Kahindi, uh, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Tom, good to see you. Roya, thank you very much indeed.